Coaches, how are you doing tonight? Great. Doing good. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So the first question that I have, it goes to all three of you. So each of you, you competed collegiately in your sport. Coach Ubi Parapovic, you even played professionally. So what was the transition like going from a player to a coach? We'll start with you, Coach Gates. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Can I defer to the to the lady of the group? Absolutely. I have, I have manners. I have manners, Billy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. I guess I can't defer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the transition from student athlete to coach, uh, particularly in my case, uh, I went from being a student athlete to actually coaching some of my fellow teammates. Uh, my senior year, I shared a co-captainship with my other fellow senior, and I feel like my teammates already had that sort of um, seen me in that coaching role. Uh, so that was kind of uh, easy on that aspect. Um, I would like to say, though, that it wasn't the easiest thing. Uh, I wasn't able to do all the same things that I once did with my team. And actually, my doubles partner and best friend was still on the team. So it was pretty hard to distance myself. Um, however, that was only for a little time. And now it's obviously completely different. Um, I would say that the transition has been fairly easy, uh, speaking in coaching terms. Um, I remember being a student athlete pretty vividly. So I think uh, I know what makes certain athletes tick as well as I think I can still relate to them. Um, and I know what they're going through on a daily basis. Uh, I also received a psychology degree at Cleveland State. And that's actually come uh, in handy when handling and speaking to these talented young women um, that are actually still developing. But uh, it's been a very rewarding experience, and I love to see all these athletes rise to occasions and grow into um, amazing people. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I guess Coach Gates or Coach Ubi Parapovich, wh which one of you would like to go next? I was just trying to be polite, uh, Billy. I'm sorry. You do have your manners, Coach <laughs> Sorry Gates. to put you out there, Coach. Um, I apologize. But for no me, worries. Billy, um, you know, I, I first want to say – you know, my heart's out to anyone out there who has any issues or had battles with COVID-19. Um, hope all is well with family, friends, loved ones, and obviously all our programs. But, um, you know, my transition was, was, was easier than I thought it would be. Um, I was lucky enough to be in a leadership role as a player. And while I was trying to pursue a career professionally, I ended up being offered a position to coach unexpectedly. And that um, was an unbelievable opportunity. So I had on one hand to try to go down the road of playing professional sports. And then on the other, I had the opportunity to, um, you know, coach in professional sports. And Dennis Johnson and Alvin Gentry presented me with an opportunity. It was too good to pass up on. Here I am, 22 years old, as a uh, player development coach in the NBA. And that was something I could not pass up. It was a fork in the road, a tough decision. But the people that prepared me taught me how to sift through and make the best decision for the long term. Um, the difficulties that coach just spoke of, I was 22 years old. And obviously, most coaches in the NBA at that time is a lot older. And I couldn't fit in as a golfer or, you know, in, in the adult, adult part. But I had to separate myself from the players. And I had to make sure that I protected my coaching dream. And I did that just with the help of some guidance uh, from my mentors. And it was interesting. So I, I, I definitely applaud the question. That's a great question. Um, but I thank, thank you again for having us. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. And now, finally, Coach Ibi Parapovich, how about you? And you played professionally again, so what, what was that transition like? I mean, these are some good answers, uh, to be honest with you, by both coaches. So I'm, it's going to be tough to follow for me, but um, I'll, do, I'll do my best. Um, first and foremost, I hope everybody's um, safe and healthy at home, and uh, thank you for having us. Um, I think this is awesome, you know, to um, have a sort of discussions like this. Um, to answer the question, uh, transition, um, 
It, I mean, it, I guess I'll say the same thing as Coach Gates. Uh, it was easier than I thought it would be, um, especially you know, uh, you know, always playing soccer since you know since youth and ending up at the professional ranks. And early on, I didn't think about coaching to be honest with you. But as I was getting older, um, it, it interests me more and more in a sense. And you know, especially the last four or five years, of, you know, my of my playing career, I really started to get into it a little bit. And you know, um, having mentors and coaches that um, you know uh, took you know Mexico to the World Cup, you know, Juan Carlos Osorio and another coach, you know, uh, Hans Bakke was a assistant coach with Man City. Um, Jesse Marsh, who's now with the head coach with Red Bull Salzburg, you know, just to name a couple of guys, a couple of mentors, not to include players that I played with. Um, that played at the highest level possible and just talking to them how it's done at, you know, at, at their respective clubs and, you know, previously and how, you know, the communication piece, uh, you know, and uh, I think it also helped me uh, uh, gaining the coaching licenses as well. Um, that kind of uh, propelled me in a, in a soccer coach's terminology sense because uh, sometimes uh, the, the vocabulary that you use as a player is nowhere near, you know, um, as broad as, as, as coaches and you have to you know make sure that your communication with your players um, is um, honest and they have to understand what you what exactly you want from them uh, so uh, from that perspective um, I thought the transition was somewhat smooth but you know I'm, I'm a young coach I have a lot to learn and you know I'm, I'm willing to learn in, in whatever it takes to get to the next level I guess Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you all for sharing. You each have very unique stories and um, I'm sure, it, you know, it's, it's very beneficial to all of our student athletes. So thank you for sharing. Um, now into some individual questions and we'll start with coach Bensman Maharaj. So you, again, you played collegiate tennis, you traveled around playing tennis. What advantage does it give the Viking tennis team to have an on-campus indoor facility? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so up until four or five years ago, we didn't have uh, an indoor facility uh, on campus. Um, but this has played just an essential role in the growth of our um, program. And actually, up until this year, we were the only school in the Horizon League uh, to have our own facility um, on campus. Um, so it's given the opportunity for athletes um, to obviously have more accessible court time um, and involve as it gives them the ability to like prioritize their time with uh, studies and tennis. Um, like I said, four or five years ago, we were actually driving about an hour to and from practice. So um, time is very precious for a student athlete. So, you know, gaining that hour back, you know, they can work on um, other stuff on the court or they can go home and study for a big test. Um, so that's really uh, been a huge advantage. Uh, it's also given us the opportunity to recruit talent that we once weren't able to. Um, having a facility on campus is a huge selling point uh, to prospective students. Um, and lastly, our indoor facility has given them the most rewarding experience, in my opinion, um, being so accessible to our athletic family to come and watch, as well as our whole student body. Uh, I feel like our tennis players are able to finally play and perform in front of their support system. Um, and I know it means the world to them to see familiar faces in the crowd. So thanks everyone for all the support. Well, thank you for uh, that amazing answer. So now let's move on over to coach Ubi Parapovich. Coach, this question is coming from a fan. What characteristics of a soccer player stick out to you most? Um, I'd say uh, body language and the overall attitude and approach towards, you know, uh, training and games. Um, I think you can tell a lot, uh, you know, by a player's interaction on the field with other players. Um, but I'll tell you what, um, every once in a while, some of the best players have the worst attitudes. Uh, and, you know, so you know, once you, once you reach and find those kind of players and you can, you're able to uh, make a connection with them and start working on, in, you know, on, on improving those pieces, then you get a complete player. But early on, you know, that's, that's one of the things that obviously besides the, the ability, you have to also the ability of a player, you know, to understand, uh, to understand the game and play the proper way. But uh, other than that, uh, it's the overall attitude. Awesome. Awesome. And 
Coach Gates last, but certainly not least, I have two questions for you, actually. Oh, wow. The first <laughs> being, you had your first official practice today of the 2020-21 season. Yes. How was it? Well, it was, it was amazing. And I say that because, um, you know, I just can think back on March 13th when we were pretty much shut down in quarantine and we never knew that this day was going to come as the schedule and the NCAA have constantly and consistently changed uh, whatever the requirements. So uh, although it took a lot of courage from our student athletes, it took a lot of work from our socialization committee. And I thank all of them for their grace, their patience, and the hard work that uh, went into getting us to this moment. So, um, you know, it, it was unbelievable. It was a lot of energy. It was the first time our entire group got together. So it was one of those, um, you know, moments that I wish I could bottle up because it, it reminded me of, you know, uh, sort of like a, a, a Christmas morning type of feel where everyone's excited to be there. We knew the countdown. We had to make sure we were going to remain in the um, uh, unbelievable, uh, you know, protocol uh, that was required. And that's, you know, making sure that our guys remain safe and, and not uh, positive on any kind of COVID test. So our guys, as we were waiting for our results from our tests on Monday, um, you know, we got to go ahead and it was, you know, it was exciting. So I, my hat's off to our team um, and, and the young people who are enduring this moment. They have done an unbelievable job. They were patient. And it's, it's, it's a change, right? It's one of those changes where their world is getting flipped upside down in terms of uh, behavioral patterns and socialization in, on campus. And my head's off to my guys. They've, they've done an unbelievable job. Yeah, Coach, I was there obviously today at practice. And it was great to see <laughs> the guys back on the court. But let's move from the court to the community for the second yes. question. You and your staff, you've been very proactive in educating uh -huh. your players over the importance of voting and the voting process. Yeah. So for those who don't know, can you talk a little bit about what you and your staff have done to uh, prepare the guys for this upcoming election? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we went out, we wanted to take it a step further, not only register and make sure our guys were registered, but we wanted to educate them and hopefully bridge, build a bridge to what a polling experience would look like. So we took our guys to the polls and had a field trip where we ended up going to the Cuyahoga Board of Elections. And voting is a fascinating process, Billy. After we peel back all the historical inequalities that surrounds it, the country has made progress, okay? And for us, we wanted to make sure our kids exercise their right, but eliminated the fears along to go with being a first-time voter. So it was remarkable. Uh, we were able to not only uh, go behind the scenes, but we hosted here in Cleveland at the, you know, uh, Cleveland Clinic, our city hosted the first presidential election. So I wanted them guys to go down there, see what the hoopla looked like. So we took a double field trip down there, took pictures in front of the, um, you know, the, 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 I would say the arena of where the um, debate was going to be at. And, you know, it was just make, making sure that these guys were educating themselves, but also uh, helping as adults to bridge the gap. So it was, it was great. Well, thank you, Coach, for, you know, educating the guys over this uh, important, you know, issue of voting. Um, and thank you, Coach Benson Maharaj and Coach Ubi Parpovich for taking some time tonight to chat with us. Uh, it was very much appreciated. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you three so we can introduce our next set of coaches. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great night.